how does the stock market actually perform after the Federal Reserve's first rate cut? You may have seen this chart, which shows the stock market is up on average 4.9% one year after the Federal Reserve does their first interest rate cut. But what I found very peculiar about this is there are some years where the stock market is up between 15 and 30%, and then there are other years where the stock market is down between 15 to 30%. And I wanted to know why that was was. What is the difference between those years where the stock market rallies and those years where the stock market crashes? So I did a deep dive into the historical performance of the S&P 500, and what I found was very interesting. A very clear pattern emerged and showed a very clear distinction between those years where the stock market is down significantly and those years where the stock market is up significantly. And after doing this analysis, I was able to develop a very clear picture of where the S&P 500 will most likely be one week from now, three months from now, one year from now, and even two years from now. For those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Stock Curry. I'm a former Merrill Lynch and Morgan Stanley investment banker, and I've been trading for over 25 years. Let's dig into my research and let me show you what I found. The first thing I did is look at those years where the stock market significantly underperformed. And we'll start here with 1973, where the stock market was down 36% one year after the Fed cut interest rates. The orange line on this graph is the federal funds rate and the blue line is the stock market index. And what we find very interesting is that prior to this 1973 rate cut, the stock market was up significantly and in fact had already started to fall. And when the Federal Reserve did actually cut interest rates here in 1973, it was just one year later, less than a year later, that they turned around and rose rates once again right in the middle of a recession. And that was probably the most significant impact on the stock market falling. But really pay attention to the fact that the stock market was up significantly prior to this rate cut. And then it was after that rate cut where the stock market really started to fall. And of course, we were also in a recession. In 1981, the stock market was down 17.8% one year after the first Fed rate cut. And on the blue line here, which is the stock market, once again, you see going into this rate cut, the stock market was rallying. And then the Fed cut rates again about three to six months later, the Federal Reserve raised rates once again before doing a final cut. And it also triggered another recession. So once again, we have the same thing where the Federal Reserve raised those interest rates after they cut them. We also see us going into a recession and we also see that the stock market had rallied leading up to this first rate cut. The next time we had a major dip in the stock market after the Federal Reserve cut interest rates was in 2001, where the stock market was down 14.9% one year after the first Fed rate cut. This time, the Federal Reserve did not turn around and raise interest rates once again. But what we do see is that, once again, the stock market had gone on a massive rally leading up to this first rate cut. And then we actually did the first rate cut, the stock market fell, and once again, it led us right into a recession about six months after that first Fed rate cut. The final significant downfall was in 2007, where the stock market was down 27% after the Fed first rate cut. And once again, we see a major stock market rally leading up to this Fed rate cut. And once again, about three months after the first Fed rate cut, we entered a recession and got a significant downturn in the market. We see a pretty consistent trend here. Every single time we had a major decline in the stock market of between 15 to 30 percent one year after the Fed first did their rate cut, we see a stock market that had rallied going into the first Fed rate cut. And we also see a recession starting about three to six months after that first Fed rate cut. So that's what happened in those years where the stock market was down significantly.
Now, let's take a look at what happened in the years where the stock market was up significantly. And for this, I looked at the last five times that the stock market rallied after the Federal Reserve did their first rate cut. I started my analysis with the first Fed rate cut in 1989, circled here in green. And what I noticed was a different pattern on the chart, circled here in yellow, about one year or a year and a half prior to the first Fed rate cut, we had a significant decline in the stock market. And this was the crash of 1987, also known as Black Monday, where we see that huge sell-off. We also noticed that at the point that this first rate cut occurred, the stock market had not yet recovered back to the all-time highs that it had reached earlier in 1987. So two years after the stock market had reached an all-time high, it was still not back up to that all-time high when the Federal Reserve cut rates. We also see that a recession did not start until more than a year after the Federal Reserve cut interest rates. So we see a very different pattern from what we saw when the stock market went down. In this case, we had a crash about two years prior to the Federal Reserve cutting interest rates. The stock market had not yet recovered to an all-time high, so it wasn't necessarily going on that major rally like it had been before, and we also see a delayed recession. The next one I looked at was 1995, where the stock market was up 13.4% one year after the Federal Reserve did their first rate cut. And what I found interesting here is that leading up to this first Fed rate cut, the stock market had been fairly flat for about five years prior to this first Federal Reserve rate cut. Now, I'm not saying the stock market wasn't going up. In fact, it was up about 100% over a five-year period. So it's not necessarily the stock market was super duper flat, but compared to these huge major rallies where the stock market is up about 100% over a two or three year time period, we didn't necessarily see that this time. So the other thing we're not seeing is we're not seeing this major market rally prior to the first Fed rate cut. And then once again, we don't have a recession being triggered by this Fed rate cut. In fact, there was no recession for years after this first Fed rate cut. Next one I looked at was 1998, where the market was up 27.3% one year after the Federal Reserve cut interest rates. Now in 1998, we get this rate cut circled in green here. But once again, the Federal Reserve raised interest rates shortly after doing that cut. We also failed to get a recession for another three years. Again, the stock market rallied. So we did get a rally prior to this rate cut, but we don't have a recession until three years after the rate cuts. Now, what is interesting is that going into 2001, the Federal Reserve cut interest rates again, and that is when we start to see a significant decline in the stock market. In fact, it was a drop of about 50% coincided with a recession. But again, in that 2001 rate cut, that recession hit about three months after the Federal Reserve cut interest rates. And then the final one I looked at was the 2019 rate cut, where the stock market was up 14.5% after the Federal Reserve first cut interest rates. Now, this one is very, very interesting because we did have the stock market rallying going into this rate cut. We did see a recession about six months after this first rate cut, and we did see a pretty significant stock market sell-off when that occurred. The one difference here, though, is that the federal government printed trillions of dollars to stimulate the economy. The money had no place to go, so everybody dumped it into the stock market, and we saw this massive rally in the stock market due to this huge influx of trillions of dollars in cash that had nowhere else to go. So actually, even though the stock market did rally, it performed a lot like those years where the stock market saw a significant sell-off. 
the exception to the rule being that the Federal Reserve pumped trillions of dollars into the economy, causing the market to go up, when in reality, it probably would have continued to go down. After doing all of this research, a very clear pattern emerged. In those years where we saw a stock market rally leading up to the first Fed rate cut, and we saw a recession start three to six months after the first Fed rate cut, we see a significant sell-off in the stock market with stocks down anywhere from 15 to 30% after the first Fed rate cut. However, in those years where the stock market traded flat or had a significant bear market a few years prior to the first Fed rate cut, and we see a recession not start until at least a year after the first Fed rate cut, we see stocks rally the year after the Federal Reserve cuts interest rates. So where does that leave us today? Where is the stock market today compared to the historical past? The stock market has rallied over the past two years, but Two years ago, we got a significant market sell-off, a bear market of more than 20%. And the dashed red line here shows the high of that market to where we are today. We are above those highs from 2021, but we're not that much above those highs. In fact, we're barely above them. And now the Federal Reserve is doing their first rate cut. This reminds me a lot of the 1989 rate cut, where we had a significant market sell-off in 1987, two years prior to the first Fed rate cut. And just like today, we saw a massive rally from the two years from 1987 to 1989. And just like today, we're slightly above those highs that we were at two years ago. So this appears to be a very similar, almost identical match to 1989. We got a major sell-off in 1987. We got a major sell-off in 2022. We got a major rally from 1987 to 1989. We've had a major rally from 2022 to 2024. And now we're getting a first Fed rate cut. The question is, Will we get a recession in the next three to six months, sending stocks down significantly? Or is that recession going to be delayed by a year or longer, allowing stocks to go up? Since this period of time is so similar to 1989, let's go take a look at how stocks performed in the years after 1989. We see something very interesting. Stocks didn't really go up and they really didn't go down. In fact, they traded flat for two years. Now, they mostly traded flat for about a year and a half until that recession hit. Then they had a significant sell-off, but then that significant sell-off was followed by a significant rally. And just to remind you what happened in 1989, stocks were up about 7.5% three months and six months after the first Fed rate cut, and they were up about 12% a year after the first Fed rate cut. Now, it wasn't all rosy quite exactly. Yes, stocks were up 12% one year after the first red rate cut. But when that recession finally hit, we did see a pretty significant sell-off, but it ended up being a great time to buy the dip. When the recession did hit one year later in 1990, stocks fell 20%. But after they bottomed out, they went on a 37% rally over the next two years. So if stocks perform the same this time around, we can expect a fairly flat market for the next year. Maybe a recession hit sometime in 2025. Maybe we see a 20% drop in the stock market in 2025 when that recession hits. But then maybe sometime around October of 2025, stocks bottom out. And then we go on a massive rally for the next two years. That would be how stocks perform if we do, in fact, match that historical analysis. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's time to buy stocks right away, because if we dig a little bit deeper into how stocks typically perform in September and October, especially in an election year, you'll see that you might want to wait a little bit longer before buying the dip.
Historically, September is the worst month of the year for the stock market, with stocks falling on average 1.17%. So far this month, though, the stock market is up 1.12%. So does that mean 2024 is defying historical precedent? Well, no, not necessarily. Once you take a look at the day-to-day -day stock market performance, you'll see we're right on track. September's historical sell-off does not start until the last week of September. That sell-off is strong enough to wipe out all of the gains from the first three weeks of the month. So if the historical September sell-off is yet to start and will in fact happen this week, does that mean we can buy stocks in the first week of October? Well, not exactly. You might want to wait a few weeks still. That's because in an election year, we see stocks fall significantly in September. We see stocks significantly underperform in October and underperform again in November. The best time to buy stocks in an election year is actually the last week of October. I do have to warn you, however, that while the historical analysis is clear, stocks do not always repeat history. There's a saying that history does not repeat, but it does rhyme. While this time is unlikely to be that different, it could be different enough to where if you're trying to time this perfectly, you might miss out on some huge opportunities. So keep your eyes on the technicals, keep your eyes on the stock market. It's important for us to understand the historical analysis to know how stocks are most likely to perform, but it's also important for us to keep our eyes on the market in case stocks decide to perform differently than how they have historically do. Now, if you want to know more about how we do this historic analysis, how I look at the stock market to figure out if stocks are actually performing based on history or not, and why a lot of retail investors lose money when a lot of investment bankers make money, I am holding a free masterclass this Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. That masterclass, I'm going to go over everything I learned at Merrill Lynch and Morgan Stanley and how it differs so much from how retail traders trade. I'm going to show you why investment bankers make money when so many retail traders lose money. If you want to get into that masterclass, you do need a pre-register. You can do so using the first link in the description below. I look forward to seeing you on Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. I am so excited to share this information with you and help you become a more profitable trader. Again, the class is completely and totally free, and you can sign up for the class in the first link in the description below.